apparently in SEA, there has been an incident of target griefing, and now people are calling for, well, they're calling for a lot of things. Uh, punishment, action, rewriting the rules, uh, a lot of different stuff. So uh, let's go ahead and look at uh, what people are saying is happening. So, okay, let's go ahead and transition this way. All right, so I'm going to F11 full screen. So I uploaded it mainly because I wanted to draw a little bit of attention to it, but uh, apparently there has been some incident of target griefing. So let's go ahead and break down what exactly happened so we can understand, come to our own conclusions. I not only read this thread, but I also messaged some other people. I had Billy reach out to me from the Vietnamese community to show me what he thinks from his perspective. And he kind of goes a little bit against this thread. So I want to start off by saying that we're probably going to analyze and break things down from multiple POVs. SE Regionals Target Griefing. This is posted by Munch Drunk Perp. I'm here to show some screenshots of the target griefing that happened during SEA Regionals. For context, the SEA Regionals Day 2 was yesterday, and we saw multiple times the VN players were target griefing other non-VN players. Wow, okay. So uh, before the post was even finished, we started adding three edits. Surely it's not a coincidence when the VN players play reroll and none of the VN players hold them, but when a non-VN player plays reroll and then two three-star people start holding it, okay? Circumstantial, a little bit on the sus side, but nothing uh, decisive or conclusive. Edit Foman DD non VN player tweets on getting griefed. All right, we'll go ahead and open that in a sec. Edit same VN player that grief Foman DD says in their lobby to hug the other two non VN players. Okay, so apparently in this lobby chat, and I did read a little bit through this beforehand so I can get a good sense and explain what's going on here. But apparently, uh, Om Tu Om Kya Kya, I don't, I don't, my Vietnamese is, is, is uh, completely awful. I don't even know any, I don't, I don't know two words in Vietnamese, so I, uh, forgive me on pronunciation. Om Tu Om Kya Kya means apparently hugging the other two, which is, I think people are interpreting this as uh, essentially let's smother or gang up on the other two, right? It's kind of maybe using some, you know, slang and colloquial language. A subtitle, non-VN player tweet on getting griefed. Okay, so we're going to open up these two Twitter threads and read them right after. But for now, let's go ahead and talk about the circumstantial evidence. Day two, lobby one, game five. A VN player by the name of Ban Xiu Pao will not make it to day three. There's only two more games left. Chaos, Singapore GOAT, or one of, uh, alongside Steppy. A non-VM player is playing Executioners and needs Vex, and Bonshio Pao starts buying Vex 3 on 3-3, three, three, even though he's clearly seen with the Riven 2, which, okay, I'm going to go ahead and say this right now. That in itself doesn't mean that much, but uh, the circumstantial evidence, evidence piece one, which is like, he buys a Vex, and it's like, okay, well, are we just not allowed to buy other people's units, right? Like, it's... I think that's entirely reasonable. If he's, if he, okay, he has a Riven 2. You're not allowed to buy a single Vex? I mean, I think that's just standard play. So, like, it's... Uh, you, you, but that's just one piece of evidence. Apparently, as you can scroll through the thread, there are many, many different screenshots. At stage 4-5, Ban Xiu Pao is clearly playing Riven as he is 3-starred, but he's still buying and holding Vex. Okay, so this is part two. And if you zoom and enhance... Doo -doo -doo -doo, is now holding two other Vexes. Which you can argue again is not even like that big of a deal because I mean, like if I'm re-rolling and I see other people are re-rolling and you know, like I'm holding their units, it just gives me an advantage to do that. That's that's not uh, that's not that's not that bad in the isolated incidents, but it is implying that he's trying to specifically punish the the, the Vex player, right? It's implying that he's trying to grief uh, the Vex player. In the same lobby, another Vietnamese player by the name of Viet Mom. Is it actually a mom? Or maybe uh uh, I don't know, maybe he wants a Viet Mom, is playing Punk Reroll, but proceeds to hold Urgot, Samira, and Vex, which Chaos, again, the non-VM player from Singapore. So here's the other image. Also, do take note that Vietnamese player Viet Mom will not make it to day three as well. So it's two players who are eliminated from the tournament, are specifically holding units to, to interrupt other people's flow. But the thing about it is uh, he's playing like a reasonable board or they are rather i don't know uh who vietnam I mean, maybe it is a vietnamese mom i don't know maybe, maybe she uh you know she's playing on behalf of uh, her family uh looking at this right now it looks like she's re-rolling for vex amumu pantheon playing this punk jinx and also just like playing senna it's, a, it's, a, it's kind of a woke board if you really think about it v like re-roll rapid fire uh, with JG on Senna and playing ramping rhythm. So it's like, okay, I'm playing ramping rhythm and then I'm teching in Vex and Mumu. 
which you know is like kind of again it's a little bit it's very it, now it's starting to get a little bit kind of sus like before i think it's like okay circumstantially like holding units to grief others not that big of a deal but now we're starting to get in some uh this is just weird like because the thing is this person has nothing to play for right so if you're thinking about it from the free-for-all perspective you're just like well you just kind of play for yourself you don't really play for other people but now it kind of feels like you're just playing and holding it to purposely make other people's lives difficult because this is not a standard meta comp however do you are you supposed to punish people the question is are you supposed to punish people for playing off meta comps how are you going to prove that they're cahooting that's exactly the, where we're the, the point we're driving at which is how do you actually prove that they're actually trying to collude and the only piece of it on this currently is that they want to hug the other two which uh, for people who don't know there's a uh, two non-vietnamese player in this lobby again i think it's eggy and um i i actually don't know maybe maybe who uh, i but i don't know i do know eggy is not i think oh chaos chaos wait is chaos in here i didn't, I didn't see his username maybe maybe he's just down the list or something Ohm means here to hold. Oh. Okay, according to uh, someone in chat, they said that Ohm here means not only hugging, but holding the other two. Why is he making a little face here as if it's like, uh, as if it's happening to him? So he's been, okay, so this does look now very suspicious as if they are straight up ganging up on like the players. In the same lobby, another video player was holding, holding Urgot Samir. So okay, we read Man, this. I'm getting more dogged again. Okay, so they're basic. So now the conclusion is they said hold the other two units, and that's what's happening, right? In the exact same lobby. Oh wow! Another VN player, Lam Lewis, is seen holding a Mumu, which non-VN player needs for execution stop comp at stage six one. So in the same lobby, not one, not two, but three Vietnamese players are now kind of going out of their way to just hold units that Chaos needs specifically. This feels like to many people this is target griefing. And now there's wow, there's even more screenshots. There's like eight more. And that's just of one thread. Apparently, there's like an entire collection of it. More screenshots. Day two, lobby one, game four. Non VN player, Chaos, playing Senna Rewool with Blinged Out. Okay. I mean, that's a very good setup. Senna. He has four Senna. Oh, he has seven Senna's. Blinged Out. Okay. Looks like a pretty standard setup. VN player, Ban Xiao Pao. Ban Xiao Pao back at it again. Holding Senna's. End up playing Katarina Roll and still holding Senna five. Or send the ad 5 one because non-V player K has not hit his yet. Okay, that the last part you can't necessarily fully say for sure, but he is holding a random send a pair. That is true. Did he hold it at the expense of econ? Is the question. I do have the VODs. We can go back and watch it. And we're going to go ahead and, and, and ver verify that. Lamb Lewis holding Senna while playing Yone reroll. Oh my God. Okay, wait, he's holding one Senna. Like, it, it, again, you, you could just buy out the shop. You could, or he bought it literally the entire shop, right? So you could argue that. But uh, again, it's, it's circumstantial. Uh, GD feed holding Senna while playing KO reroll. That's just standard practice. I mean, he's holding one Senna. Okay, so you can't, in isolation, you can't necessarily just say like they are griefing, but it is uh, all together in collection. It does feel like they're trying to, uh, they're trying to hold on to some of chaos's units now what's really important is that we have vod and one of uh someone someone actually linked me the vod so i'm gonna go ahead and look at it right now because this is what game four of day two lobby one day two day two lobby one game four we're investigating together this is day two lobby one i see subtitle and chaos in this game okay so yeah this is so he's holding a moomoo's and i think this is kind of wait, what was the screenshot the screenshot was at it doesn't show the stage six one i mean that's I mean, if you're not hitting at 6-1, you're never hitting. So we kind of have to rewind a little bit and uh, watch how this game is going. So let's go ahead and fast forward. Bro, they literally coordinate griefing using in-game chat. Why are people still debating? I think it's important to just make sure that I have all the evidence I can uh, before. Look, I okay. The reality is, if you understand what position I'm in, a lot of what I say will influence things. And so I want to make sure that I have all the information I possibly can before I come to the conclusion. If I just like throw out something, it's like, dude, if you watched the VOD, it would have been way more simple, like understandable because they're like open selling and rolling down. They're buying a bunch of stuff. Like I'm trying to see if I can make sure I do my due diligence before I start dropping the hammer, right? Let's say if I just say like this is, you know, if I start accusing people, because accusing people of cheating is a is an incredible incredibly damaging thing to people's reputation so you just want to make sure you're doing your due diligence on that okay um so now okay but so far the only vase that we have currently because apparently you're like why don't you just check their player pov uh that that's not possible because they don't stream their own povs the only thing that we have is the main broadcast which is why we're watching it right now the only thing that we have right now is, is, is the main broadcast feed so i'm fast forwarding trying to see if i can get any glimpse of what is going on 
Okay, so we, we see that very quickly, right? Like one Senna, which is entirely reasonable. You could argue he could sell both of these, but you could also say that holding set is something he could think about if he wants to go in the country or whatever. But again, it's a lot of like, it's very suspicious, but circumstantial stuff right now. GD feed, he was the person that was like accused of holding it. He's not holding anything right now. This is game one, right? Or ga uh, game four, I'm on the right game. Not holding anything right now. Skipping ahead, like no one's taking this Amumu. But I guess they don't want the items. I don't know. It's, uh, hmm. So like, okay, so maybe it looks like to me, based off what's happening right now, it looks like to me that someone said something suspicious and now people are looking for pieces of evidence to try to support that theory. Why didn't they? Someone, why didn't someone like go out and take that Amumu? Is that too obvious then? I'm not entirely sure. Chaos did stream it. I could probably look at some of his games as well. This person not really holding it. This is Vietnam, a person that's kind of accused of griefing as well. But I don't think it's from this game. I think it's from Lam Lewis and Bon Chiu Pao. I gotta be honest, guys. This this game doesn't look that suspicious based off the the main broadcast feed. But um, I, again, I'm not like digging through it very effectively because I, I or rather I'm not able to actually go through it very granularly and effectively because I don't have the individual POVs. Okay, this is a roll down, but this guy is not accused of it at all. Six Mui. I mean, if there's proof where they said in some chat, then XDD, the thing is a lot of these TFT players actually uh, just don't have a lot of critical thinking. Um, yesterday, apparently before the final game of yesterday's regionals, Re Replay was jokingly, but not really jokingly, suggesting that they all grief Kiyun. And like, I don't think he actually meant that. It was not jokingly. Okay, I, I, it was, the way it was framed to me was uh, was re-replay was kind of like half jokingly, half serious. Like, isn't it just theoretically correct for us to grief Q or something like that? But I, I didn't realize he was being serious about it. I saw drama on the title and clicked immediately. What's the T? Okay, so apparently there's collusion of target griefing where the Vietnamese players who were eliminated from competition decide to start griefing the people who were non-Vietnamese, right? So basically, VN players were, were looking out for their homies. They said, hey, we want Vietnam to go through this regionals qualifier because it's SEA. And apparently, they're, they went out of their way to target grief people who weren't from Vietnam. It doesn't matter who you're from. If you're, if you're from Thailand, if you're from Singapore, if you're from Philippines, if you're from Taiwan, Hong Kong, wherever, like, as long as you're not from Vietnam, we will look at your board and we'll grieve you. This is actually the screenshot that they sent, right? The the seven Senna's. Okay, so we're, we're kind of tracking the screenshot, so to speak. He was holding a moon with expensive econ. There was a Reddit comment saying that VN casters were encouraging players to grief non VN players on the cast. Wait, okay, I, I you don't I don't believe every Reddit comment, but like if, if that is the case, oh my god. I mean those guys, th those casters one should be ashamed of themselves if that's true. You know what? I need I need to actually know that's true. I I don't need I don't I don't want to speak down on them if I don't if that's not true. You can't really always uh I I don't want another uh, Reddit moment. You know, like he's holding one Senna, but like that's. You know, again, he, th this is the ebb and flow that becomes really difficult because like, well, you know, he's holding a sun and that's making chaos life more difficult. But like, is that out of the bounds? Like, are you not allowed to hold other people's units? And th that's the ultimate question. Other people who are functionally eliminated, though, and colluding to do that is where we're trying to figure out. Right. So GD feed, I don't say, see anything too crazy right now. I'm Vietnamese. I can translate if you want. I don't have the clip, though. I don't have the clip. One sentence almost. I think he's yes. That's kind of the argument. And so uh, we're trying to get to the, the bottom of this. Chaos looks like he hits anyways. Okay, this is Chaos's roll down. Pivot slightly away. Spectator mode is hot garbage right now. I mean, um, at least it works. At least it works. Okay, so a center three did get hit. So he hit it anyways at five one. Target griefing. This game doesn't. I'm, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be real honest, you guys. I I'm I'm leaning towards like it looks like collusion to me, but this game itself doesn't really seem that suspicious. Okay, yeah, he's holding like two Amumus and obviously like like you know holding the mumus in this spot it's like you're not playing a mumu that uh that definitely looks uh you know like he's trying to target me, but like oh, actually it's not even this game oh wait what are you talking about this is the, he's not even playing a mumu in this game oh it's just senna oh oh, oh, oh. yeah yeah so that, i mean honestly this doesn't even look like he looks like he's griefing someone else like like chaos is not even trying to play a mumu i mean yes you can play a mumu in senna there, there's actually a variation that you can play with two cost ap where you play just like you just go for a mumu three because the mumu three is goaded but um imo any individual game and instance of someone holding unit won't consist enough of evidence but only comments about colluding would i think that's where i'm at right now i think that's where i'm at right now well we'll see but the thing is some actions can be also very obvious like so sometimes sometimes the actions just watching it in motion speak for itself you know what i mean okay so i got nothing from this game i got nothing from this game so far okay so this game i'm not gonna lie not strong evidence 
Day two, lobby three, VN player BO, very apt name for a gamer, who is at the bottom of the leaderboards, has a very low chance of qualifying. BO holds Riven and Kale while playing Katarina Reroll at 4 2. Subtitle, who's playing Riven Reroll, and Food Time, who's playing KO Reroll, hits 4 3. Uh, so, th oh, this is one of the Riven, this is the Riven player. So holding a kale and a ribbon. Okay, so so here's the here's the question. Here's the question that I'm starting to form in my head because what what I'm seeing right now is a bunch of like he's holding one kale, he's holding one ribbon, and and he's eliminated from the tournament. So here's here's a question. Um, if you're not able to advance in tournament, let's say you're here in in 29 to 32, are you not allowed to buy units that other people are trying to play? I'm uh that, that, that's that's kind of what is feeling like uh is part of the thing like yes yes it does influence things you're right it's just uh it feels to me right now which is yes obviously this person is trying to make it other, difficult for other people but it's almost like one of those things where um you this is this is why you can't write the rules for that because you're saying if you're punishing this if you want to punish this or you take action against it how do you actually write this in the rule set Aren't they holding one of the guys? You know, technically he's holding. Yeah, exactly. Technically, this guy's holding an echo, and anyone that has an echo is like, well, this guy's griefing me. I mean, that's that's probably not the case. Now, now, now that's that's a torment organizer's perspective. I'm speaking from a person who's a referee or an admin in this situation and has to put on like I have to look at the rules and look at the way competitive integrity is being uh is being measured by based off what we've established from the rules. Then, and then there's the other side that I think more dog talked about, which is the spirit of competition which is what are you trying to do from a sportsmanship perspective, right? And this is the argument that goes into a lot of things that like, for example, Wade Schneiderson argued about, which is like competitive integrity and the spirit of competitive integrity need to be preserved. I think that anybody that says something like this, which is holding the other two units or holding the other um, champions of other players, even jokingly deserves kind of an infraction. That's almost like, because if, if you said anything else, you're basically joking about cheating. At, at, that, that is at best. At best, you're joking about cheating. At worst, you're actually just cheating. So whoever this is, whoever, whoever whichever uh, moron decided to type this. Okay, actually, he might actually, he might be very smart. The, the guy who decided to do something very moronic tribute to the action i mean this guy's an idiot it's like you just you're not supposed to actually type this stuff like what what are you actually expecting if some who if you actually type this and you do you do you lack the the critical thinking skills to stop you from typing like blatant things that can be interpreted as cheating you deserve to get punished so this guy get him out of here i mean like i don't care if he's joking or he didn't even do it or nothing even happened you just you can't you can't joke about that stuff you can't joke about this stuff it's just like there's a certain thing you like it's like getting on a plane and yelling bomb and then being like, wait, I, I, it was just a prank, bro. The, the, the YouTube prankers, right? The people who go on the plane, they're like, they, they, they're like, oh, it's just, a, it's just a joke, man. It's just a prank, bro. And it's like, but that's the exact type of thing that we need to avoid because it just compromises everything about this tournament. If you're just sending false alarms and that's the best case scenario. That's judging that you're not actually a malicious actor. You're just an idiot. Play stupid game, win stupid prizes. Horrible argument XD. I mean, I think it's actually quite similar, which is uh, I actually don't think that uh, the argument is that bad. If you want to if you want to argue against me back, go, feel free. But if you're just like, OK, you're wrong and that's it. Uh, you ba ba basically you're just telling me to never read your messages again, which is totally fine. Re replay circumstances is different because he was talking about how it was correct for top three to grief you and secure their own spots, not griefing to get him in. Uh, yeah, fair enough. Uh, I, I need I actually haven't gone back and watched that exact thing. Did this did they have his VODs up? So we so again, this is suspicious, but also like he's holding one ribbon and one kale. And it looks like these guys hit at four three anyways and are streaking. I mean, it's that those are instances. And I think that's exactly uh I think that's what they're trying to point out. There's just like there's too many instances where it raises suspicion. And here's the proof of the players that are on the bottom. Uh this I remember reading about. Apparently, this GD fee guy plays with a spectator right behind him. He plays on cam with a dude just standing behind him. And apparently, uh, that guy's not like, like he says like that guy's like a referee, but, um, oh, we can't see. Sorry, 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 sorry. Right here. I was trying, I was trying to, I was trying to zoom in. Apparently, he's just sitting there with a guy just standing behind him during the tournament. Um, and, and he says that this person's a referee with a with a with a beer in the hand i don't know it is it's, it's, it's probably some beverage maybe some boba or something like that it just looks it just looks like beer it's just funny <laughs> and players talking and laughing on cam question mark question mark question mark the end players were staying in vietnamese to go hug the other two men i mean maybe there's the, there, maybe there's from philadelphia city of brotherly love 
Probably not. Oh, I'm just playing center reroll and holding seven Katarinas on my bench when another non VM player is playing Kat. Oh, well. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, okay. Now, this, this is the first screenshot. This is the first screenshot that I see that, uh, that, 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 that looks a little bit, uh, <laughs> That looks pretty bad, not gonna lie. He is at 91 HP. It is worth noting this person's at 91 HP, and this person is also hit center three, and he's playing golden ticket. But he's still in the running. He has 26 points, right? 26 points is enough. Who is this person? This person is PK1. Let me see, PK1. ET, yeah, he was, he was very much in the running. He's right there in the cutoff. Wait a second. All these people get for regionals is 15 USD transfer to RP. These guys are literally cheating and colluding for, for $10 in RP. You guys have some standards. Maybe it's about pride. Maybe I don't get it. I'm not from Vietnam. I don't, I don't understand. Maybe there's some national pride that you're really like fighting for, but $10 in RP. Get a grip, people. Oh my God. Oh my God. At least it's not eggs. It's literally, it's, I mean, it kind of is eggs if you think about it. It's also, well, like, okay, so he's technically in competition. And if this person, whoever he's griefing, which I'm guessing it's Eggy here, or sh is it Shaw? No, Shaw's GD, so it's probably from Vietnam. Uh, if that person is also another threat to take his placement, I think that's still technically okay. That's probably going to be an unpopular opinion. But, like, I don't know the context of this. If if this person is on the outside looking in... Let's say this person was in like the, the 20 range or something like that. And he's trying to specifically deny that person because it increases his chances to get in. It's technically like a fine, a fine play. Salvi says, that's honestly true damage cat with Kiana. I would play that. <laughs> all right. Well, this Salvi guy, I mean, first of all, Salvi, not everyone's as 10 head as you are, but uh, true. If you do get Katarina three with true damage emblem, I mean, you have true damage emblem, you have death cap, then you get Kiana for two crowd diver. It's not even that bad. That's actually pretty good. Okay, so this last, I mean, obviously, it, it, okay, the thing is, circumstantially, it looks really, really bad. This, though, I mean, this, this is where it gets me. Let's go ahead and read these threads to wrap this, uh, to wrap this SCA part up, and then we read Billy's thing. I'll say my part here. In set 9.0 game 11, I got griefed by the 30 second player playing Kale. He doesn't care about anything, just holds what unit that Kale uses. And he lost to Krug, by the way. And he does the same for griefing me on game 12. And I got 10th. Okay, and links another thing. Okay. The thing about this drama is that it links to many other links, which links to other things. And it's just, uh, it's just crazy. In set 9.5 game, I just high rolled out of his mind so I can get number one Keck W. But in set 10, I just got griefed again on, elect on game 11 and 12 XDD. Don't get me wrong. I didn't hate any Vietnamese. And I still think the VN is the best region after CN. But just imagine how 75% of VN players play with 25% of SCA doesn't even same country with 12 games what the player who did not pass the final round should do this is my last two games smoge so he's playing jazz with senna actually he was playing center reroll and then this guy went for senna three which i mean his senna doesn't board doesn't look bad he's saying smoge he went second this game I, i'm guessing he needed it first i guess okay so i guess he got great and he pivoted out and got second anyway oh because he had two damn Ah, he had blinged out. I see. He had blinged out. He had blinged out as this augment. It's, it's kind of hard to tell, right? Zoom and enhance. Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's blinged out. So he blinged out, tried to commit to Senna, and then uh, this guy just pivots into him. He did the... I mean, it's kind of like what Preston re Replay did. They just both ran into it, and neither of them can hit. And then Foeman, who went fifth with Disco. Okay, I mean, they got him here. They got him here. This is the second most damning piece of evidence. Because who is playing Disco intentionally? No one's actually trying to play Disco, man. Okay, this is actually the second most incriminating piece of evidence that I've, I found today. Like, the, before all this other stuff, circumstantial, circumstantial, circumstantial. No, man, this guy actually played Disco to try and send this guy bot for. All right, book him too. Wait, is this the same guy? K-H-A-C-M-A-N-H? -A -A I think it's the same guy. It is! K-H-A-C-M... All right, this guy is officially an idiot. He's officially an idiot. Okay, he, he goes in the clown book. Book him. <laughs> Man, Th this guy goes on the shit list. Ka, Ka Siman. <laughs> oh, all right. All right. Th I mean, okay, I I'm pretty sure this guy is the problematic actor. And here's the, he, you know what's kind of messed up? is because this guy is making the entire region look bad. Okay, well, that that and uh, wh whoever decided to, to just crack open a Budweiser or a Pilsner while uh, GD Feed's playing. Like, dude, just 
Do you know how hard it is to just take two steps to the left and not stand in the camera? Like, you, you don't even have to, like, oh, man. You don't even have to actually stand there, man. You can watch from, like, a little bit out of the camera distance. And and this is actually casting a lot of doubt because he could be backseating IRL, which is against the rules. I'm really sorry, Foman. This looks like you got griefed, and that's terrible. Foman, uh, I, we watched some of his games in SCA. Seems like a pretty solid player. And then Tristan... Tristan says, I love TFT. I really do. TFT tournament is probably the most fun I've ever had. And set nine the first set. I played competitive seriously. I made SEA regions before regionals. I heard stories from the other players like Roth one getting hard grief, but I never thought it would happen to me. Three days before regionals, my PC broke down and I got it fixed in time, but barely had any practice on the new patch. I had a few lines that I was very good and knew that if I can get the opportunity to play as long as I can make final lobby. Okay, yada, yada. I didn't expect to get grief in every single game. My PC broke down again. Ooh, that sucks. And I want to quit competitive forever and there and then. I got persuaded otherwise by Omnomzi. I know this player. I changed IGN. <laughs> I rebranded and played set 9.5 and I made finals at the most lower setting means I never finished seventh. This made set result. Okay, so we, okay, so we qualify for regionals again. Had one of the best, if not the best AVP in the tournament in a much stronger field. I guess people like Jazz Latte, Steppy Chaos, very impressive. Those are great players. After losing regionals final set last set, I came in hungrier than before. I genuinely believe that coming to Disco, I was the best player. I played my heart out and finished 10th with 59 points despite getting game two bot fours that felt largely out of my control. Or sorry, four bot twos. I'll be first to tell you that I didn't play perfect. Okay, so he's like caveat that he couldn't, they could have played better. I took a short nap in the morning and woke up and I saw from Discord that there were several moments when I or other C players got griefed. I looked at my VODs and there was definitely some suspicious play going on. In a world where I didn't get grief, it's not possible I could have scored another three points. In Eggy's lobby, the players were discussing griefing Eggy, but both Shaw won Mikey outplacing Eggy in those three games. If Eggy didn't get grief, and place about them, don't I make it? Oh, hug the other two. Ma it's Hansi Man making a comeback, man. This guy is just everywhere I go. I watched the finals today. I cheered on my boy, Steppy Chaos Eggy. We can say he came out of nowhere and went all the way to the rookie set, but watching the finals can help us with sick and stuff. Got three videos on what happened. Seeing Shaw get the opportunity to play for chance at Worlds made me want to cry because I won't get back that opportunity that was stolen from me. That's really sad. That prep I worked, uh, the, the prep work I put in, I won't be vindicated. And I can live with that if it's due to variance, like I said, 9.5 files. But when it's due to conclusion, something I have no control over, it makes me so upset. What's more, the VM players will be rewarded with prize money. <laughs> I mean, 15 RP, 15 RP in prize money. Let's, let's... Let's uh let's be let's let's what's be careful what we labeling prize money here. I don't care that much about the money. <laughs> I mean it technically is currency. If any of those VN players want the prize money that bad, they can just have mine. I just want a chance to play on the world stage. PS. And this is a really important part, by the way. VN players take part in something called TFT Casino. Does he mean solo slash duo Q? I think he means this game mode, guys. TFT Casino. Oh, he means ranked. TFT Casino. True, we all do that, actually. It's a custom where players put out a certain amount of money. Whoever goes first takes all, or sometimes 75% of it. In order to win easily, they usually have a team of griefers who grieve, not play, and they split the money. It's a custom where players put on a certain amount of money. Whoever goes first takes all or sometimes something prizes. So, so they're like, it's like money magic. In order to win easily, they usually have a team of griefers who just grief and not play, and they split the money. How is this profitable? Isn't this just donating? I, I don't think I understand it. Can someone explain this to me? I mean, it's not, it sounds... Okay, so what? Okay, so let me understand. So it's money matching. Then they money match with people who will throw for them against other people who want to play with them? I'm not entirely sure. Oh, oh, outside the game. Oh, 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 oh. So, so it's like what they do in League of Legends, right? Where they do solo queue. And then they like... Bet, like someone, it was happening in Tyler 1's game, right? Where like uh, Tyler 1 was queuing up with people. And then people were betting on the result of that solo queue game. People would DM other people say, like, if you throw that game, I'll pay you money. I see. So that's what's going. Oh, that casino. Oh, I mean, that that's I mean, first of all, that's like that's like super uh, inappropriate and uncalled for and, and, and not, not OK. Uncalled for. That's that's fucked up, man. You can't do that. But at the same time, it looks like it's not happening in solo queue. It's going against norms versus gold, plat and diamond. So if you were to look at some of the LOL chess profiles of the players in this tournament, you can see that they have some norms versus gold, plat, and diamond. While they could be scrimming with Smurfs, it's not just suspicion that they could be participating in TFT Casino. So they're scrimming against gold, plat, and diamond players. Oh, I see, I see. So it's a lot of like suspicious normal games, I guess. So, but the thing is, is it's I, I thought this is happening on ladder, but if it's happening on normals, I'm not entirely sure. I'm not entirely sure how that works. But if they're doing this on ladder, that's that's really messed up. And I hope Riot takes action. They need to take action. This is, I didn't even know this is a thing. I didn't even know TFT Casino is a thing. 
That's really, really messed up. Could not be within reason that such players might be colluding during this regionals and splitting the prize money. Okay, I mean, this is also, uh, I mean, circumstantial. You can't really, you can't really say like because they do TFT Casino, they, uh, they are, you know, they're, they're, they're colluding as well. But that combined with the legend, the idiot, the moron, K Kasi Man Twenty. What are you doing, man? What are you doing? The clown. In a perfect world, we redo C World Regionals and the eight of us non-VM players play for the last two spots before next weekend, but I know that'll never happen. Riot Esports is perfectly happy saying two players from a region that cheated their way there. I doubt anyone's going to read this, but if you do, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I'm not sure that I can do about this. It's already brought up before back in set nine. I just feel so sad and lost. All right, well, Tristan, I'm really sorry this all happened to you, man. Um, he was the one. He was the victim of all this. This is, this is Eggy. Okay, this is Eggy. Tristan is Eggy. He is the victim of the VN clown. Okay, I do feel obligated, before we wrap this up, I do feel obligated to bring up something that Billy has done. Because for people who don't know, Billy can carry. Billy can carry was a guy that did well in um, in competitive this this set. He got to the North American Regional Finals, right? He uh, okay, well he he got there and then he went he got day one but billy can carry still got here he connects to the vietnamese community so he does have bias because you know he's from the vietnamese community but he did analyze these games and try to talk about them on his stream so this we're just gonna read it. he told me to read this okay and i feel like we should do our due diligence and go through it billy says quote these post game chat happened on lobby one day two games one to three vm players are chatting about target reefing the other two singapore players the problem is that their message caused a misunderstanding and language barrier in an international lobby like this. A language barrier. Well, if only we understood Vietnamese or had the means to do so. Non-Viet players or non-Viet viewers can misunderstand that the six Viet players intentionally colluded to grief the other two Singaporean players. However, so far as I can see in these three games, there are no behaviors specifically showing that Viet players are target griefing the other two Singaporean players. So Billy's conclusion is they are not guilty. One thing to say is when you're playing TFT professionally and in an international lobby, you have to keep all communication in English to avoid being misunderstood. I'm feeling I'm putting words in to help tie up the grammar. And he's going, he's referencing, he's ref, man, this guy's everywhere I'm going to go, man. Ka Si Man. Uh... Oh, wait, I haven't seen this screenshot. Public ho gg ditch dc do a oi. Troll vi troll vn. Okay, can someone can someone translate this? Actually, I, I can I probably I, I should probably just translate. Let me see. Okay. All right, now I'm I'm about to, I'm about to, I'm about to split screen this shit. All right, one second. Google Translate. Uh detect language. It's probably Vietnamese. All right, here we go. Here we go. <clears throat> uh public ho gg ditch dc do a oi. Public service cannot be translated by anyone. Maybe this. It's public. Can you translate it? Oh, it's public. Can you translate it? I mean, that that is uh, that sounds that sounds a little suspicious. Uh, it, he's like, man, okay. My understanding is it sounds like he's a little bit nervous that he said it in public. Da Hong, red skin. I, I mean, Hong is red in Chinese as well. E la om na tin. Calm. We braise each other with orange juice. Okay, hopefully. <laughs> Dude, Vietnamese players are into some kinky shit. What the fuck? Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. <laughs> All right, man. I, I had no idea that this is what the VM players were into, man. All right. Um, why is making each other feel good? I still don't really get it. <laughs> I think I understand the orange juice a little bit better. I think I the orange juice part. I think I understood it a little bit better. Troll VN. I mean, VN could also mean like, uh, it could be like VN, but I'm not entirely sure. Troll, troll VN, VN, ah, uh, ah. Uh, this is slang. This is, def this is definitely slang. I, I, I don't think I see anything. Uh, oh, it's like ah, uh, ah. Uh. All, okay. The, the most suspicious sentence is this one. It's public. Can you translate it? I don't really understand everything else in terms of like, I can draw conclusions, but um, I just be guessing it's speculation. Okay, well, what, what did Billy say? However, I can start to see there are no behavior specifically shown that VN players are target griefing the other two Singaporean players. He says that uh, the problem is the message caused a misunderstanding and language barrier, which is like, there's not many more ways to interpret it, unfortunately. Uh, because if you go back to the, how else are we supposed to interpret this, man? 
if O means holding slash hugging, how else are we supposed to interpret that? There's not, that's not a language barrier. That's not a language barrier. I don't think I'm misunderstanding it. I think I'm understanding it quite perfectly. I think, I mean, or, or at least you're, there's, there's not many other interpretations of it. Unless you li mean literally, is he literally saying that we should go over to the person that we're playing with and hug them? Is that what got this guy is trying to do? He's trying to hug. Is that, is that what he's trying to do? Is that, is that he meant go hug the other two? He meant this too. Oh, it's just a, it's just a misunderstanding. We, we go hug the other two. Check my DM. Oh, Billy DM me. Uh, uh, I'll be careful revealing this. Translates. Okay. Okay. So Billy translated this. When Cam and C, or okay, end the Reddit thread, Bond Show P was holding non VM player units as well. Billy says, when Cam and C told everyone in this lobby to own to own Kya Kya means just target grief the other two guys. Then GG Shaw made a warning by saying PP can GG translate it. Kan si man change the context to om meaning hug. Vietnamese is complicated, but that's issue of valuable information right there. Thanks for explaining, man. I'll see. I need to see more about his in-game behavior to accuse his player. Just chatting doesn't show anything. Why is he dragging disop into this? GG Shaw made a warning by saying disop can GG translate it. I mean, so, okay, so you're telling me Disop can not only hit rank one on command, he also can speak Vietnamese? PP means people. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know, I'm just, uh, I'm hamming it up a little bit. Okay, uh, well, that, that, that helps a little bit. So you're, okay, so you're saying there's only one of two ways to interpret this message. So you're, you're, so the, the, the defense of Kan si Man is that he meant literally hug. I'm, uh, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm reading this. I'm reading this. I'm reading this. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. Because I, I think Billy spent a lot of time figuring this out, and he put a lot of work. Let's go ahead and keep hear, hear, hear Billy out. 4-6. Okay, so this is the Senna with the with the Vex and the Yamumu. Viet Mom, Day 2, Game 5, Lobby 1. I believe this is called target griefing as Chaos is contested, Vex, and Amumu. He's holding country units instead of spending more gold to find potential Senna 3. Okay. And then he shows this other one. where This is, the, this is Chaos stream, by the way. Chaos is playing uh, Samira. In the same lobby with Ban Xiu, uh, Xiu, Xiu Pao and Lan Lewis, they have the same Vex and Mumu grief, but this is strategic griefing as it does not affect their overall results. And they're holding on to it with their extra gold out of interest. Okay, so he's saying that this is just T this is just standard TFT play. You don't you, you want to maximize your place because remember the thing about griefing is you have to also the the way that it's passable is that if you think that it's something that gives you the edge to maximize your placement right because you're trying to like figure out like or, or not necessarily just your placement but you're trying to do something that gives you the best chance to have success in the game right as opposed to going out of your way to ruin your game and ruin someone else's i think that's what he's implying by strategic griefing because griefing is part of tft root no regardless of what you guys can say tft is a game where griefing is part of the game you can't remove that that's part of it that's part of what the dynamic of battle royale and and, and uh free for all tag some other things and show some examples of it okay but the th I, I wish he screenshotted and showed the interest because he's saying that it's not costing them econ it does look like it's not costing land lewis that much econ but again these are just circumstantial uh screenshots if you can spot it out they immediately sell those units when they need to gold to upgrade their boards okay Billy said that he went back and watched all of these VODs and said that they immediately sell the units when they need the gold to upgrade their boards, which is just part of TFT. Day one, lobby one, game four, Lam Lewis and GD Feet are holding on to Senate to grief chaos. However, this is strategic grief as they're holding their extra gold and did not affect much of their econ or tempo. It's obvious that they sold Senate immediately as they need gold to upgrade their board. And these are the, the necessary screenshots that they showed in the thread showing things like this Senna and showing things like uh, this Senna as well. And again, I, for, for what it's worth, I'm actually agreeing, right? Like, he, if he's watching the games and saying, like, look, they're sell they're holding, which gives them a problem, but they're selling. And if that's true, that's part of the game. And I think I think we're almost all unanimously in agreement. I think we're all mostly in agreement that if they're just circumstantially strategic griefing, it looks suspicious in the context of that screenshot. But uh, you could theoretically justify it as strategic griefing. However, in the same lobby, Ban Xiu Pong playing cat and still holding Sun to pair. This is considered target griefing for two. Oh, 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 oh. He actually does say. Oh, wait, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Billy decides to go in. Billy's not just defending every VN player. Ban Xiu Pao is playing cat arena and still holding Sun to pair. This is considered target griefing for two reasons. His board is not fully updated. I guess he meant upgraded. Still has Zed and Echo pair, front line, not two stars, and he still held center pair, which could hurt his econ and miss potential upgrade for his board. 
And two, the only reason for a player to grief another player is to contest for a placement. In this situation, Maestro Pal is at 1 HP, while Chaos, who was playing for Senna, was at 8 HP. Therefore, the only player you can test for a placement is Viet Mom at 8, 10 HP, or Lam Lewis at 2 HP. Damn! Wow, he actually just drops it right there. He has, you have no reason to be holding these Senna's. You, you're contesting only Viet Mom for placements. Okay, Billy. Okay, Billy. For a player who qualified for C regionals, he could control what decision he made during a match. And this decision fell into intentionally target griefing. Oh, oh, damn. Are we adding Bon Shio Pao to the clown book? Don't know if there's any back scenes going on with GD Fee, but this is not allowed in pro TFT tournaments. I mean, come on, man. First, allowing a third party to indirectly sky in the games may get a player distracted and affect their in-game decisions. Yes. Second, if the player's referee or coach, they do not have the ability to stand around a player while they're in-game. That is also true unless authorized by the tournament organizer. For example, in CN Regionals, they had an admin browsing behind players, right? They have an, uh, an admin watching like two players. And so they're like far back, but you see them in the, the view. That's That happened in CN uh, Regionals. And then it may not be a problem which you give this player punishment, but the arrangement for VN, G, and Rai should be more professional and avoid future situations like this. That deserves a round of applause. Thank you, Bill. You know what? I agree with Billy's takes around the board. The first cut you get, I was just like, I gotta be honest, man. They don't look that much like grief. And I, I, I was kind of scared to, to kind of defend them just based off of like the initial circumstances. But Billy also followed up, verified it and said, hey, this does look like it. So uh, Boncho Pal, I mean, that is not cool, man. That could look, that deserves investigation and follow up. And he's entirely right, right? Needs to make sure that there's more professionalism across the board. One thing that Billy mentions as well is that it's important for players to also stream their gameplay. Because one thing as uh, they saw is that most of these players from Vietnam did not stream their gameplay. I don't think actually, uh, some people did, but I, I think not everyone did. And that is why we need them to do so for competitive integrity reasons. Is there a link to that Discord? I mean, sure, yeah, it's just it's just Billy's Discord. I mean, I, I'm gonna try to make sure not to leak it. <laughs> Chance that says, <laughs> Billy, one more time says, Omen in this context means to grief. <laughs> uh all right well uh there we go uh so so based off of what we found out Bancho pao and kasiman 20 these are the guys right here riot they're the ones that need further investigation they need to be talked to and more importantly take their 15 rp away now nah, i mean if you guys don't if you guys investigate and say that there's no punishment i mean because you didn't have rules for it like it is what it is but at the same time like how bad would it feel if you if you, if these guys are queuing with you in the Vietnamese server and you see that they have like a five hundred dollar skin because they got fifteen free RP in USD or fifteen USD in RP? That feel pretty terrible. All right, so there you go, guys. Uh, my very <laughs> that was that was uh, we did some drama investigation. Investigation. I think that was pretty fair. I think that was pretty fair. I think my take on it for the most part. Uh, if you are competing in tournament, my final conclusion: if you're competing in tournament. Do not joke about ruining competitive integrity. Don't talk about like, you know, kind of cheating or doing something like like target griefing or collusion. Like it's just it's just not uh, what you should do. Like if you do, you're going to suffer the consequences of winning a very stupid prize known as uh, either Man, a hate brigade more dog to get. or uh, a riot punishment. So uh, don't do that. Uh, the second thing is it, 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 collusion is very against the rules. If you think that's part of TFT, it's not. I could legitimately believe some teenagers think that because they do stuff like that on ladder in solo queue because they're helping out their buddy who they're queuing up against wherever sniping, they 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 might lack the the context of it. But for anybody who's ever like, eh, it's not that big of a deal, it is a big deal. Competitive integrity is a very core part of what keeps the game honest. And if we, I've seen what happens when collusion, which in my opinion is on the same tier as match fixing and a bunch of other things that's not cool. If you're if you're trying to rig the results or influence the results by ruining competitive integrity, then the competitive scene is going to fall apart. And if that's what you want, then we don't want you. We, we don't want you to be part of it. Like everyone has a chance of playing TFT, but not losers like you. Uh, what did Soju say? What did Soju say? Soju said it best. He said this clip. Spike, like, doesn't that just mean that Okay, I'm down for some gifted subs. Oh, I lost in Spike. Yeah. Like, doesn't that just mean? So that... you said I'm down for yeah, gifted okay, subs, not that part. Gifted subs. I lost anyway. Okay, never mind. Okay, but like, like I, I, I saw. Oh, holy fuck! I saw what what people were doing in, in in uh, the like Vietnam regionals or something. Like the Vietnamese players that are already out, they just fucking target grief and they just hold all of the units of the non-Vietnamese players. Like, how much of a loser do you have to be? Like, hello? He's doing this, by the way, while competing in a tournament. Uh, and I like that Zoju stood up and spoke about it. Uh, he didn't have to. It's funny. 
He's playing. He's literally playing in regionals and uh, flaming Vietnamese players who are uh, actually doing that. But uh, yeah, uh, cut it out. Don't do that. You guys are losers. That's trash behavior. Exactly, Sam Harrison.